everyone and welcome. Lots of people have asked me about the connection between ourselves spiritually and ancient societies of long ago. And I was just talking to the Archangel Michael and one thing that was said to me is that we have to remember that ancient societies were spiritual in so many ways. They were connected in lots of ways as well. But we need to go back to further than that even. We need to go back to the indigenous people. And I know I'm not probably pronouncing the word properly, but they are so full of so much knowledge and wisdom. They are you know, they, they have learned spiritually how to connect to nature. And that is one thing that I always love to hear because the angels and God have taught me everything out in nature. You know, you, you hear about indigenous people knowing how to spiritually connect so much to nature that they can go out into the forest and they know what to do to keep the forest safe for themselves, but safe for, you know, all of nature. They, they can feel the vibrations, they can hear the sounds, they can allow the energy to tell them what is happening in the forest. And that is part of being spiritual. You know, I, I don't know why God, you know, and the angels chose me. You know, um, why God and the angels made me in one sense, you know, so aware. But yet I know God and the angels have been working with each and every one of you as well for you to make that spiritual connection for that intertwining of the body and soul for growth. And I, I believe that's why we have to look back at, you know, ancient societies, because even when you go further back, you, you discover ancient societies were kind of so afraid of the dark in one sense of you know going down into the earth the center it became a sacred place to them a place where the dead would go and yet that doesn't happen we don't go down into the center of the earth our soul our soul lives forever you know our soul goes to that place we call heaven. And I know in ancient societies, it would have been called many other, by many other names. But if you just, as you discover more about ancient societies, you can see how sometimes they got lost a little, you know, and how sometimes they found their way back a little bit. And you can discover as time went on, some lost that connection altogether and some kept it. But sometimes those that kept it, kept it for, what would I say? I, I don't like saying it, but for power over the people, you know, for, for control. But yet you can see some ancient societies that, you know, where the people thrived. And maybe you and I would say, oh no, they didn't, but they did because they were free. They were happy. They were one with nature, one with life. They understood that connection more than we do here now in this time ourselves, but yet we are, we are running, 
you know, we are excited, we want to learn more, we want to make that connection. And just seeing those ancient societies, those indigenous people that even today we are learning loads from them. You know, we're, we're learning how to, some people might say, go backwards. You know, go back to the old ways of taking care of nature. But it's not just about, I suppose that's what one would have to remember. It's not just about taking care of nature. It's about that spiritual connection to nature that ancient societies had and lost and indigenous people that had, in a sense, I would say, broke away maybe or became separate from ancient societies, became more spiritual, more connected. And to groups that I would say would be the American Indian, um, they became so connected to the land, to nature itself, that it was everything to them. And the uh, Ab Aborigine um, people as well of Australia. And when you hear and see how they have become connected, those indigenous people that are extremely important to each and every one of us, because in the Western world, we're in a sense, you know, taking some of their knowledge and it's being used, but we must not use it in the wrong way. That's one thing God and the angels have said. You know, we must allow ourselves. No one else can help you grow spiritually. You have to decide and, and to learn and to be taught, in a sense, how to connect. Um, it's, it's like going to school. You know, the teacher is helping you to learn letters and how to read. But the child, which we all are children, we have to decide we want to learn, we want to read. So it's the same with spirituality. It's the same in whatever religion you are, you know, to believe in God, to believe in the angels. Um, you've, you've got to, in a sense, make that commitment and be open to it because even for myself spiritually I'm still learning God and the angels are still teaching me you know every day they may out of the blue show me something that I never saw before or they might you know God and the angels might tell me something and I say to them but what I don't understand and and then they say no more and then you know time passes and all of a sudden it's repeated again and I'm shown something so I understand you know a little bit more and the Western world in a sense has taken a lot of spirituality from the indigenous people of the world. And I, I have to smile, claim it as their own, but spirituality cannot be claimed as your own. It's for everyone. And that is one thing that God and the angels have taught me. They have said, Lorna, this is for everyone because we have to grow spiritually we have to have faith. We have to have that hope and that love and that compassion, that, that kindness. And that's what a lot of indigenous people have. Not all of them, I have to say, but a lot of them have. And, you know, I, I always remember um, watching a program on the TV once and it was about 
this local person who was, you know, goes up this mountain and can bring people up this enormous mountain and it's dangerous and beautiful and exciting and but I always remember the 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 man saying I know everything about this mountain and he he said I don't just know the tracks and the trails and and you know where the rocks are and and all of that kind of thing he said you know I can feel it and that in, in him saying those words were really strong. He had that spiritual connection to the feeling of the mountain. He didn't even have to go up the mountain to know how the mountain was feeling today. It's, you know, that, that spiritual connection to nature, to our planet is so deep. You know, it's so, so strong. And each and every one of us can have this. He would know when to stop, when to continue on the journey. No, not today. Um, and I just loved him saying he could feel the mountain. And I always said to Archangel Michael, do you mean he could feel the heartbeat of the mountain as well? The mind of the mountain? Could he hear the mountain talking to him, telling him? And Archangel Michael said, yes, he hasn't lost it. He is connected spiritually to that mountain. And I did smile because knowing that everyone wanted him to bring them up the mountain because they felt safer with him. And you don't learn that overnight. This man probably learned it from his father or his mother, or maybe it was a grandparent, you know, who passed on that tradition, that, in a sense, that spiritual connection, telling him, you have to connect to the mountain. You have to feel it. And I'm sure they were teaching him from the time he was a child. And that's one thing that, you know, God and the angels have, everything they have taught me, everything that I tell you, God and the angels have told me. And one thing God always says, Lorna, have faith. You know, don't don't be doubting. Don't let the world um, contaminate you. And I have to say that is a bit hard at the moment because the world does put pressure on you. But I always step back and say, no, I'll only do what God and the angels want. I will pass on all my knowledge to you. I will teach you. I will tell you all I know. Um, and I love doing that. So one thing I would love for all of you, you know, um, remember and look on yourself as a child, like that young man when he, he was a boy. He, he decided as a child, I want to learn how to connect to the mountain. And I bet you even as a child, he knew exactly what he was doing. His soul was connecting to the mountain and his human self. They were becoming that little bit intertwined. And that's one thing each and every one of us can do. You can say to yourself, you know, in God's eyes, we are all children, but you can say to yourself, I want to learn. I want to have this knowledge for my life to make my life full of, of hope and love and compassion. I want to be a spiritual person. I want to help to change the world by 
growing spiritually by my soul intertwining with my human self, by my connection to everything around me, regardless of what it is. It's like even my connection to, to this phone that is recording um, and my connection to everything within this room. Because no matter whether it's technical um, or electric or made of wood or, or made of paper, you can sit there and allow yourself to become spiritually connected. I'm doing that just now, this moment. And I can feel everything in this room. And I can feel the, the power of the energy of the electricity and even the power of the energy of the light that's coming in the window, but as well as the light that is coming from a lamp that's in front of me. And I would love you all to decide that yes, ancient societies were on the path to spirituality. They were on the path to growing more, but materialistic things got in the way. But you don't have to allow that to happen. You can say to yourself, I'm making the decision to grow spiritually. I want to learn just as I wanted to learn how to read and write or how to walk or how to run and play. I want to learn to allow the intertwining of my soul. I want to grow spiritually and be able to connect to nature, but to my loved ones, to everyone around me, to literally everything and to feel the joy of life, to feel that love and the compassion and that hope. I can tell you it fills you with so much energy um, that at times I would often say, I want to run up that mountain. And Archangel Michael would say, yes, you can run up that mountain spiritually, Lord Lorna, but your human body won't be able to do it as yet. But you can do some of it. See how far you can go. So I'm always running up the mountain, um, running through life, enjoying it, dancing, spinning around, um, feeling the joy of being alive. So allow yourself to, in a way, connect like the ancient cultures. Allow that to happen for yourself. It's like, allow yourself to say yes and allow your soul to come forward, not to be afraid. And I suppose that's maybe enough for me to say today, but I know you can do it. And maybe look at some ancient cultures, um, but the positive ones, the ones that, that were connected to nature, the ones that were, what would you say, showed love and care. And many of them did. It's just that it changed and then we lost it altogether. And now the world today is fighting to get back that connection spiritually. So let you be part of that connection. God bless and love you.